make sure y'all let y'all peoples know about this. Um, today's go just gonna be real laid back, like just kind of going over a couple things. Uh, just kind of just going through uh, the different tools that. Oh, what happened to Paraswap? Different tools that I use. Um, <clears throat> That's what I might be done. Oh, okay, there it is. Different tools that I use, especially in the DeFi space, um, different platforms that are coming out or that you can use now, but they don't have like a, a token yet. Um, so just to give you guys a little history, um, welcome everybody that's hopping in. Um, but uh, you see this platform here, Uniswap. How many of you guys ever used Uniswap before? Any of y'all in here ever used Uniswap? Yeah, I have. Okay, clutch, clutch. All right, so you get the basic understanding of swapping one token for the other, and your token stays in your wallet. Um, I think I have a sample wallet here that I can show y'all. I think I still have some. Or something. Damn, I got no even. No, it's whatever. So um <clears throat> I'll show you guys it even without the Eve. Um so yeah, this platform, um me and a couple of my friends or whatever early on, uh, we were able to hop on this platform early, like before they even had um a token or actually when the platform actually just dropped, they needed, they had people utilize it, but um, essentially they needed beta testers and they rewarded us for using it so early. And we were awarded um, 400, 400 uni tokens. Um, now, for you guys that aren't aware, the uni token is at 21 bucks right now per token. So just to give you guys an idea of how much that's worth right now, we got 400, 400 of their tokens for free, which is equivalent to $8,000 right now. Uh, when it first dropped, it was around 3000 or whatever. And it was all for free. Um, there is free money in the crypto space. I, I want you guys to get this straight. There's free money in the crypto space and it's all around you. New projects that, that come out, right? They raise money from investors or whatever from the beginning. And part of that money or part of their tokens, um, they allocate it for, um, for marketing. And part of that marketing is to give people some free cryptos to do some basic, um, some basic social media stuff like like a post or reshare and re retweet something. Um, I'm going to show you guys an example. Um, they're called Airdrops, okay. Mm -hmm. And there's this website you guys can write this down called Airdrop Alert. I made a whole bunch of money off of Airdrop Alert over the past years um, by just coming in here. All right, I'll go to airdropalert.com. Uh, There's different type of uh, new projects that are coming out that are doing airdrops. Whenever you hear airdrop is just like in a video game, like if you play Call of Duty or whatever, having like a, a care package or whatever, like something drop for you, like you're, they're giving these out for free. Well, not, not necessarily for free, free, because they do require you to still do something. Um, so let's look at this retrieve coin i don't know what this is and half these coins you never heard of them because they're brand new uh but instead of purchasing these coins which are hard-earned money you might as well get some of them for free let me give you just a little background on airdrops i wasn't a part of this and i'm mad i wasn't but back in 2015 ethereum was airdropped there was a thousand i mean a hundred ethereum tokens that were given out to every participant in the airdrop. Well, 
we know where Ethereum's at right now. So, I mean, I'll still do the math for for some of y'all. Um, but, let, you know, Ethereum's at like, what, 2,300, let's say, all right? Just times that by 100. This is how much people got for free um, in terms of U.S. dollar value if they held on to it right now, right? Um, so 100 free Ether Ethereum tokens were given, um, <clears throat> which is now worth $230,000, and it was all given for free. The same thing with the, the uni tokens, 400 of them being given, which is worth $3,000 at the time of the airdrop. Now, um, now it's worth about $8,000, and it went as high as uh, 15, 16,000 um, during the pump. And we're looking to get back up there. And Uniswap is a project that I see is long term um, for various reasons. Uh, and so I'm holding on to it. Mm -hmm. But my whole thing to y'all is there's a whole bunch of these free airdrops or whatever that don't require much of your time. So let me show you one right here. So the air pro the airdrop prize pool is worth 200,000 of these tokens. And uh, Two two thousand uh, people will be randomly selected um, and get a hundred of these tokens for free. Now, I'm not sure if this token's already being traded. I could just come to CoinGecko and search. Uh, I don't think this is it. No, this is C. Yeah, this is something totally different. So I don't think the token is being publicly traded yet. Yeah. So. Uh, you could get information on the token sale and everything because, um, yeah, they're not they're not out yet. Uh, but, yes, yeah, so you can go on the website, uh, get some details about them, understand what it is that they're trying to do. Um, I mean, <laughs> it's not like most of y'all do this anyway for stuff you got to pay for. So at least go get in the habit of doing the research behind the project for getting free you know tokens of that project that way it'll put you in the habit of knowing what to look for uh when you are looking to actually put your hard-earned money into something um you might even stumble upon projects in which you do want to just put money into because you see that their their use case is something that is useful and you see that they can actually um uh deliver on something um I could already look at this and be like, yo, this is basic as hell and most likely scam-ish. Um, just from jump, uh, I could already tell. Um, let's look at the team on here. Um, so this is like my basic search that I do, right? I'll just go to their website. I'll see how it's laid out. One main thing that I really like to look at is, are they using like a template of some sort to build their website on? Because think about it like this, like if, like crypto is just programming, right? If you got a team of programmers and they can't build a website from scratch or, you know, they have to use a template type of thing, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it ain't great either, right? Um, one thing I do like to do, especially with brand new projects, and I always encourage you guys to, to do the same, look at who the team is, look at who's on that team, right? Um, when you get on there, if they have their LinkedIn, that's a good sign. If you can't see the team at all, their faces is blurred out, or there is no team section, that's a huge red flag. But if you do find a team, make sure you, you find a name. Usually they'll have their LinkedIn um, link to the page, you want to make sure that you go to that LinkedIn. Here's why. You might be able to look at a project and see like, oh, snap, they doing something that that's solid, like they're solving, you know, the, the, the problem of world hunger, right? And you're like, oh, this is going to take off. But then you look at the team and this team has nothing to do with like they, they have no background in anything that's philanthropy wise or, um, you know, that's <laughs> that's, that's philanthropy wise or in that space. Um, he's a CTO. He thought it was meant to say C10. You see how much PTSD I got? Like y'all see <laughs> random words on things and it just flash bullshit in front of y'all nowadays. Like. <laughs> 
that's that PTSD I got for real. Um, but nah, nah, like they, if, on this front, right? You want to go to their LinkedIn. You want to look at look at um, primarily what their experience is, right? Um, this guy has been, let's see. Okay. And of course, this all too isn't verified, right? It's not like it, it's verified. If it was something that, uh, if it was someone that really wanted to scam people or whatever, they all could cahoots and, you know, uh, put up a whole bunch of BS here that seems to be relevant to what they're trying to do, right? Um, but they, they may not actually have that experience. So like I said, this is just a basic on the surface, taking a look at a company or a project. In this case, it's for a project that you're looking to get free tokens out of. You're still going to take the free tokens because regardless, I mean, I'll show you what you have to do to get those free tokens, but I just jumped into how you can analyze this company and the, the people behind the company um, just in case it's something that might take off and you're like, hmm, let me just throw a few bucks into it at these early stages. And this is another way for you to catch projects early on in the game. These haven't even hit the, the market yet. They haven't even hit um, you know, any, any type of exchange or anything. So not a lot of people know about them. Um, so you can come in here and be one of the first peoples to, to earn some of the token, to get behind the project, et cetera. All right. So take a look at what his background is, right? Seems like it was a blockchain speaker. Um, it looked like he's from France. Um, I got to meet in the mirror. He, he might he might have been like a uh, um, a finance professor of some sort, uh, marketing and commerce. Um, yeah, numerical information, whatever. So it, it seems like he's he's bounced around a lot um, into different things, but uh, and it seems like he has he's been a professor for most of uh, his career. So little things like that like really matters, all right? You, you've been a professor, but that doesn't mean you actually put in the work and actually did some stuff. Um, so you, uh, you wanna just take that quick look on, uh, is the team real? Okay, if they are real, let's hop on their LinkedIn or check them out to see what work have they done. Um, ooh, that, that's like unmuted. Everybody go mute real quick. I'm getting feedback from somebody. Um, but yeah, you, you just want to take that, that quick look, right? To see who, who's actually the, behind these projects. Now, this is where this get crucial and where you could uh, come up clutch. If these are real people, right? And they're passionate about their project and stuff like that. You can now follow these people on LinkedIn and other social media platforms and talk to them directly. That's the inside scoop that your friends, everybody else that's in the crypto space is not really going to have or think of. But these are real people, real regular people that's in their house because it's COVID for them too. And they're just coding away at this project. Um, but they're worth a couple billion on paper because their crypto is worth that much, right? So these are real regular people. In fact, I would say like, 60 to 70% of my insider information are from developers on these projects directly. And I follow uh, a bunch of them on Twitter, most of them on, um, on uh, LinkedIn here. Um, I got a whole bunch of messages and stuff like just talking to different people in the space. Um, so overall, like it, you're going to get a lot more information um, speaking to these people directly, they're going to give you the real rap, the, you know, the inside sauce before it even hits any news tabloid before, you know, your favorite influencer is telling you to buy this or buy that. Like, you'll know more about these uh, projects before anyone else will just by simply, uh, following what they're tweeting, um, simply, uh, chatting with them, hitting them up, develop a relationship with them. If it's a, uh, a project that you see uh, going in the future. Um, you won't believe like how many 
CEOs and project leaders and shit like that in the space that I know just by simply, you know, saying, Hey, like I'm, I'm interested in your project. Tell me a little bit more about it. Like, and we, we just start from there. All right. Um, so forget this little retrieve saying thing. Let's go back to the, uh, airdrop alert page. So, uh, you'll be able, well, 2000 people will randomly be selected to win a hundred of uh, their tokens. Uh, so let's go down. And the first thing you wanna check for is the native blockchain, just so you know what wallet to give them when they ask you for, you know, what wallet address if you potentially want. So um, I always look for Ethereum ones, you know, just blockchains that I'm constantly using and on. Um, just so because I know, hey, I already have a wallet there. I don't have to go and create one. So here are the steps. First step, you're going to go to this airdrop form um, and fill it out. Um, let me just show you. It's a simple form. It probably, yeah, it's asking for your Twitter. Oh, actually, this is what you got to do on the task. You got to follow them on Twitter, join their Telegram group and channel. Uh, the links are below. You'll like and retweet their pinned tweet. Um, make sure to tag two friends and use this hashtag. Fill the form out below and uh, give them a like on their airdrop alert page. So you'll give them your Twitter username. You'll give them your Twitter, I mean, your Telegram username after you logged in or, you know, join their group. Uh, you're, you'll give them the link of what of the retweet that you did. And then you'll give them your Ethereum wallet, um, no exchange wallets, but the direct wallets like your, the ones from your MetaMask or uh, directly from your uh, Ledger wallet. And then you also give them a, a like on the, on the page. So this is simply what you'll do, <clears throat> right? And this, these steps here kind of just repeat the steps that's on the form with following them uh, to join the Telegram uh, groups and stuff, um, retweeting the pin uh, tweet, liking them on Airdrop Alert, and submitting your Ethereum wallet. So those are literally the steps in order to receive or for this one be in the the drawing for a hundred of their tokens, and that's it. And pretty much all of them are like this, where it's just a simple retweet or follow them on this page or join this particular group of theirs because they're trying to grow their numbers. They're trying to grow their exposure, especially in the beginning. So they will give out their free crypto just so they can get some exposure and some notoriety. Um, so this is a real simple, easy way to get free cryptos. There's hundreds of them every day um honestly you could just sit there and just fill these out um daily um i used to do them a whole lot um i've kind of scaled back i probably do like two or three a week type of thing um but yeah they, they even broke it down into DeFi into different stuff so you can go ahead and go into the DeFi ones if you're uh interested in that space and just uh fill out stuff to get Oh, secret is on here. You know what's funny? I actually bought into this um, ICO. It might not be the same company, but it, the logo is the same, and it made me think of it. There was a ICO back in 2017 called Secret, and the thing never panned out. I think they went under, and now there's a yeah. I think. This might be from the same company, <laughs> from the same people and stuff. Um, and so you you want to watch out for those type of things too. Uh, you'll get into projects and they don't pan out. And then two, three years later, somebody else come out with the same thing in the same name, or it's the same group trying to do the same thing over again with the new hype that's come into the, the market. So you always got to be careful. Um, and the best way of doing this um, is you know, get in some free crypto. I mean, there's uh, no risk on your end, uh, just a little bit of time. Um, for this one, it seems like Secret Network is a layer one solution built with Cosmo SDK leveraging proof of stake using Tendermint, Byzantine, fault tolerant consensus algorithm. Okay. 
but I don't want a layer one solution. We're moving away from that. But either way, you can learn a little bit about the crypto and um, of course do the steps to earn that free crypto. Any questions on airdrop alert? All right, moving on. Y'all should check it out. Get y'all some free crypto. All right, uh, for those that don't know, uh, CoinGecko is what I use to look up um, look up the different cryptos um you guys should <coughs> you guys should definitely check out coin gecko um or coin market cap and these crypto these uh platforms are strictly for informational purposes right you you want to learn about a particular crypto um you go to Coin Gecko or Coin Market Cap. I like Coin Gecko specifically because uh, I think Coin Market Cap got bought out by Binance, and there's a little little bias thing that's going on on there. So I try to stay away from that. Uh, but here's one unique thing with Coin Gecko. Um, I think Coin um, Market Cap started utilizing this as well. everyone when they come in all right welcome new people um make sure y'all stay muted all right yep yeah, so <clears throat> one cool thing about uh coin gecko you get to kind of you get to filter things a bit so i know there's a lot of people that get confused about the different exchanges right um which one are centralized, which one are decentralized. Uh, when you can click on spot, these spot um, exchanges, they are the centralized exchanges. Um, as you can see, there's a whole list of them. Um, Binance, Huobi, Coinbase, FTX, Kraken, Binance US, Crypto.com. All of these are centralized. And this is what I want you guys to understand about centralized exchanges. Whenever you send crypto from your wallet to another wallet, you're basically transferring ownership of that cryptocurrency from one wallet to the other. Now, you could be in control of both wallets, right? So essentially, you're uh, relinquishing um, control of that crypto from yourself to yourself. Um, or vice versa, if I'm sending my crypto to any one of you guys, I am transferring ownership of that Bitcoin to, let's say, Bean, right? I'm sending Bean one Bitcoin. I'm transferring ownership of that Bitcoin to him. Now, when you send your crypto to a centralized exchange wallet, you are, in fact, transferring ownership of that crypto from yourself to that um to that centralized company, whether that's Binance or Coinbase, right? You are giving up your ownership of your cryptocurrency um, and giving it to them. Now, of course, and you know, right now in good faith, they are giving you access to your account and that you can see the balance of what you've deposited and you're able to make exchanges. But do understand that you don't actually own that cryptocurrency. Okay. You're actually, you, they're just giving you access to it in a sense on good faith based, based off of their business model. But if they want it to be <clears throat> malicious in any kind of way, they in fact can do that because you actually gave up ownership of that cryptocurrency when you transferred it into the account um, that they rightfully own. Although it might have your name or whatever on it, it's rightfully their account. In fact, this is how it works. Whenever you send crypto, let's say to Coinbase, it is collected in one big account and then put into the respective person's um, account, okay? So you wanna make sure, hold on, who's still muted? I 
but everybody just stay muted for right now. Um, so when you send your crypto to a Binance or to a Coinbase, it is collected um, all at once, right? It's not like it's a dedicated wallet just for you. And they just put the money into the account once they um, obviously figure out that the address that they gave was just to you to deposit into. So they know that that money came from you. But all that's collected up top is theirs. And like it's, it's their crypto technically. They're just giving you access to it in a sense on good faith. But, you know, it's 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 actually theirs. You actually transferred that ownership over to them. On a decentralized exchange, like up here, you see DEX. You can click on DEX and you have your Uniswaps. Oh yeah, I forgot version three is out. I'm not sure what MDEX is. Um, I've been seeing that pop up a lot lately. So I'm gonna check it out for y'all, see what's up with it. Uh, Pancake Swap, I'm not a fan of because it lives on Binance. Um, <clears throat> one inch, uh, you know, so, so all of these are decentralized exchanges, meaning that no ownership of your crypto gets transferred until you're ready to make that transfer, until you actually authorize to make that transfer. So just like how I was showing you guys Uniswap's thing, right? Um, so I, this is the Uniswap interface. I'm simply selecting one crypto to swap for another crypto, okay? Uh, but before that, you have to connect your wallet. Uh, you have multiple options on what wallets to connect. I have MetaMask on here. So once you see this wallet address, that means it's connected. So now this interface is reading what cryptos are in this wallet um, and what I can, um, what cryptos I can basically select to swap from and what can I swap into. Um, I don't have much cryptos on this particular wallet. Uh, let's see what pops up. Let's do this BDP just to show you guys. So I would select one of the cryptos I already have in there and then, you know, select a crypto that I want to get or something else that, uh, you know, I add on to what I already have. Um, so let's say I want to get some ether. Now it does say I have zero ether, right? I will need Ethereum to make this actual swap. Let me explain that part to you guys. Ethereum is a platform. Okay. Ethereum is a, is a blockchain platform, a smart contract platform. Ether is the token that's used within that platform, within that ecosystem. It's sort of like Xbox is a platform. If Xbox came out with, you know, X coins or something, and you could use that to purchase games online, music, whatever else on the, the store, that would be the equivalence that, hey, you have the platform Xbox, or in this case, Ethereum, and then you're using the token Ether um, or X coins in the example, uh, to be able to make different transactions. Uh, and if any transactions are made on that platform, then the Ether token would be utilized uh, at, for the, the uh, fees. Okay, so it keeps the Ether token useful. It gives it a very unique use case because the Ethereum platform allows for other developers to develop their own tokens on top of it right so go back to xbox right xbox is the platform they have that x token where you can buy different stuff but let's say gta want to come in uh you know rockstar whatever want to come in and build gta on top of of uh, the xbox platform well they have to use the x token to create the GTA game and use that X token in any transaction um, that's happening. So that's the same concept. 
there's a whole bunch of coins that are built on top of Ethereum, um, like Chainlink, like, uh, shoot, all the small little cryptos that y'all be talking about, most of them are built on top of Ethereum, or they were taken from, like, the code that was on top of Ethereum. It might have been forked or copied and put onto another platform, like PlayStation, right? GTA is on both Xbox and PlayStation, right? So it's the same concept with these cryptos that you'll have Dogecoin that was on Ethereum while still is on Ethereum, but there's a copy of it that's actually on Binance chain. And a lot of people don't know that. Um, matter of fact, yeah, before I move on to this, I'm going to show you guys that next on how you can verify on which token is where. Um, so on here, right, when I'm doing a swap, it I didn't actually send my token, my BDP token to Uniswap. I didn't actually send it yet. None of that, right? It is just reading. The interface is reading what tokens I have right and is set and i can set up the play on you know what what i want to do what i want to exchange for etc it is not until uh, let me see it is not until um i actually put in an amount and this might be oh they're saying price increase whatever it's, it's not until I actually put in an amount um, that I want to swap for that, um, you know, I'll get the option to actually, is this not? Okay. All right. So I, I set up something here, uh, about two bucks worth of this token uh, into Ethereum, right? Um, I have to allow you to swap a protocol to use my uh BDP token. So that I'm gonna click it. And as you can see, my wallet pops up as a notification. And there is going to be a transaction fee associated with that. Anytime I am, you know, transacting, whether it's sending something or just giving authorization, there's going to be a transaction fee associated with that. So keep that in mind. Right. Um, and this is just basically me authorizing the Uniswap platform to go ahead and take my money from my wallet and swap it for the other one that I'm trying to get, right? In this case is swap my BDP tokens for my Ethereum. And this is me just authorizing them to be able to do that. You see the difference in that aspect? Before anything happens with my money, I'm asked, I'm, you know, I have to give authorization for it to happen. If this was in... Binance and Binance wanted to lock up the BNB token before you could swap your moon safe after it made a huge pump on <laughs> on a pancake swap. They're gonna do that. And I'm sure some of you guys have experienced that during this last pump that things get locked up or Binance always got some scheduled maintenance or something. And then CZ, which is the CEO of Binance, he would go on Twitter and just mock motherfuckers and say that your funds are safe. But he uses this this term called safe fu, F A F U. <laughs> I always look at the F U at the end, like he he really trolling people. Um, and it it's not done by accident. Um, I really think it's it's by design that every time things are pumping or dumping, the BNB token is locked up or Binance goes into scheduled maintenance. Um, it always happens that way. Uh, so with a decentralized approach, um, decentralized is supposed to be peer to peer. People are supposed to be able to have the option and the freedom to do as they please with their money. Uh, also have access to their money whenever they want uh, and can also get on an airplane with a hundred million dollars and don't have to be frisk or, you know, uh, stopped about it. Uh, I have my, 
some of you guys already have this, but uh, for those that don't know, uh, you know, this is a, a cold wallet. A Oh, you probably can't see it because of the background thing. Uh, this is a cold wallet. It's a little ledger. It's a USB thing, just like this. I know some of y'all can't see it. My bad about the background. Uh, it's a little USB um, uh, called Ledger. And I could have a billion dollars, a trillion dollars on that thing, and you won't know the difference. Don't nobody won't know the difference. All right. So that's the future we're moving into. Um, we're moving into the more decentralized, having your money um, uh, get right for you. Uh, and you want to get one of these Ledger wallets from ledger.com directly. Uh, you don't want to buy it on Amazon. Don't buy it on eBay because there are people that will buy these, put them on there, and they already had to take all your money. So buy it directly from the manufacturer. This is what it looks like. It's 59 bucks. I think they had like a you know two for one thing or whatever. Uh, I prefer the S because it has less uh, you know things on it. The the X one I believe has Bluetooth and stuff like that. Those are more vulnerabilities, you know, that people can hack into my stuff. The S is just enough for me. Uh, it'll hold all of my uh, crypto keys. Now you will hear keys in the crypto space, and I do go over all of this in full detail in my pay group. Uh, but your keys, right? Your private keys is your digital signature. Okay, your private keys is your digital signature. Anyone that has your private keys can in a sense act as if they're you and transact your stuff freely. Just like how in the old days, I know some of y'all don't use checks or probably never seen a check before. Um, you couldn't cash a check unless it had that person's signature in the front, right? Um, that's the same thing with crypto. Whenever you transact, whenever you send some crypto and it asks you, let's say you're using a centralized platform, um, let's say it's Cash App or something, and you're sending some Cash App and it asks for your password, it's just trying to verify who you are, right? Verify that you're really you, and then assumes that it is you, it is you, and they go ahead and digitally sign for you um, that transaction. Right. It could have just been me knowing your password to your cash app and I just go ahead and, and digitally sign for something that wasn't you. So you want to be careful about how, where, when you store your crypto. Right. You want to make sure that it is stored properly, uh, especially on one of these, because this here will store all of your digital signatures for all of your crypto it'll store all your digital signatures for all of your crypto so the only way that someone can access that or you know access that digital signature is if they have the device and the device has to be plugged up to the internet plugged up to a computer to then perform the transaction and the device itself has a uh, four to six letter four to six um, number pin that you put on there. Um, and so people would have to know that pin or whatever. So it, it's a lot safer because it's not connected to the internet. It's only connected to the internet or other devices whenever you're ready to do something with it, right? Uh, as opposed to Coinbase could get hacked right now. You click, like it, it's just over. Um, you know, the same thing could happen with, with Binance or any other one of them. So you, <clears throat> especially right now with all these cyber attacks, um, as we move on to into the digital space a lot more, now we're bringing art, we're bringing money, we're bringing um, everything on a digital sense, we're, we're moving into that digital sense. Um, there's going to be a lot more attacks. So you want to learn how to protect yourself properly and not just get caught up um, in an attack and be like, damn, like I should have did this or should have did that. You might as well learn how to protect yourself um, and your crypto now, because as the price continue to increase on these things, these, uh, you know, uh, 
<laughs> these hackers, they're going to want your crypto more and more. They're going to want your NFTs more and more. You can store your NFTs on this uh, Nano as well. Um, so that's going to be something that's going to be huge. Um, and you might as well just start building your foundation on these uh, right away because the centralized the centralized platforms, they have their place, right? If you're just getting into crypto, if you're brand new into it, whatever, whatever, need somewhere to buy some crypto, you know, that's where everyone does it. That's where I did it. That's where everyone kind of start at. Um, but it's getting to a point where they can no longer be trusted like that especially with, with uh, a lot of your money. And also um, the regulations that are coming down, those regulations come down on the centralized companies and platforms first, right? If, if they're saying, hey, nobody in the US can buy Bitcoin, they're gonna shut down all of the Bitcoin services for US at Coinbase. Right. That's all going to get shut down. So you might as well learn how to get into the space now and and save yourself before things get worse. So I'm going to hop off of that uh, here. Like I said, just swap one for the other and your coins actually stay in your wallet uh, until you're actually ready to make that swap. So that's the difference between a decentralized one uh, platform and a centralized platform. Uh, get y'all airdrops for some of y'all that just hopped in late uh, airdropalert.com. Uh, this is where you're going to get some free cryptos. Just follow the, the steps on the airdrop. They'll tell you how to get, um, you know, how to be eligible for these free cryptos. All right, let's get into crypto news. Um, one, uh, I know people were asking me like where I get my news and stuff from. I kind of gave a generic ass answer. So I just wanted to give you a more direct answer. Uh, this is one of my favorite uh, crypto websites. Um, it, it's, you know, uh, it's not like a big company. It's not like controlled by people or whatever. Um, so bncrypto.com. Um, they have pretty good articles and stuff like that uh, that are here. Um, you know, what changed in the crypto market while you were sleeping. Uh, quick updates, even some charts and stuff on different crypto moves, uh, just for you to understand what happened, what may, you know, what's about to happen. You get some news on upcoming updates. Whenever you see there's an upgrade coming up with a crypto, you can expect for that crypto to pump leading up to that upgrade. And then the day of, or right before the upgrade, that crypto is going to uh, fall out the sky. So you can start to get some early insight on what upgrades are about to be made to different cryptos. And then you can, uh, you know, play, play the part, you know, play your part. Hmm. Yeah, and then you got MoneyGram leaving XRP and going with Stellar. I mean, I could have predicted that one, but everyone's big on XRP, freaking army out there. Makes no sense. Um, anyway, yeah, so here, I wanted to show y'all a couple things. Um, don't get this thing, because I was testing out this platform here because I thought it was like a, a news platform overall, uh, but it seems like they're trying to push different things on here um yeah never mind on this i'll still do some more research overall on it uh i did have a couple of these other decentralized platforms up um this deuce uh platform just like how i was explaining before uh, because me and my friends were using uh, Uniswap early before Uniswap uh, had a coin or when they first came out, uh, we were able to get, um, you know, 400 Uniswap tokens for free as an airdrop for using it early. A lot of these other decentralized platforms started to follow suit where those that were using the platforms early, um, they were eligible to, to get a, 
uh, airdrop. And we don't know what that airdrop is or how much it is, but there are a lot of platforms that are very promising and what they offer, but they don't have a token yet. They don't have a crypto yet. So just out of speculation or based off of what happened in the past, we're looking at it like, hey, utilize these platforms to do your different crypto trades, right? And then one, you know, you'll be eligible for if they uh, ever do a, a airdrop, you'll be eligible for that. Uh, so a couple of the platforms, <clears throat> I'm gonna show you guys Zapper and Zerion. So uh, in the beginning, I said like, hey, you guys could be your own bank. Think of, all right, let's be frank. What does your bank do for you right now? You just put money in the bank just so you could use your card, maybe pay your bills or whatever. You might have a credit card with your bank or something. Um, you might also have a loan out with your bank, whether it's a car loan or, um, you know, some other type of personal loan of some sort. But that's it. Like, what, what use case does a bank really have? Not much, at least to me. Um, so here, um, this platform here, uh, zapper.fi. Again, it's a decentralized platform, so you can connect your wallet. Uh, I connected that same wallet that we were using before. Um, yeah, I've been using this along the way, so it's a little bit of money in here. So you guys can see um, the overall platform. So this is the dashboard. It'll show you how much money you have in your wallet, meaning what's available and liquid now, uh, how much are deposited into other platforms, uh, yield farming is basically, uh, so yield farming is like you're placing your crypto into a project and you get rewarded um, by, you get rewarded with another token or a different type of token. And I'm going to show you guys on the farm section. Uh, and then debt is basically any um, loans that you've taken out um, against your crypto. Uh, and, you know, that's the debt amount uh, to it. Um, so how I actually use it is I'll deposit some money into this. I have my actual account that I use frequently. This one is just to kind of show you guys the lay of the land. Um, you, I'll deposit money into the crypto, right? Um, and then I'll, I'll basically put the money to work, okay? And this is how we put the money to work. You can either exchange for stuff right you exchange for another crypto that you see is about to pump right um i like putting my money in pools and farming so when you put your money in a pool pools are basically just like how it sounds you're pooling together uh, a whole bunch of crypto for a protocol so the decentralized exchange you just saw that i was using uniswap right it can't work unless there's a pool of a bunch of different cryptos um, available on the platform. Let me give you a better example just to kind of have you guys uh, correlate what I mean by that. Imagine you're trying to start a Foot Locker, but you only got one pair of, you know, and you let's say you're just selling um, some joy and ones, but you only have one pair of each size. You're not going to get pretty far. Um, you're, you're going to have to have a whole bunch of, you know, the same pairs, right? The same sizes. Uh, you have to, you know, have a lot more of the popular sizes or whatever, because um, there's no point of having size 15 Jordans and only two or three of your customers wear that size. If majority of your customers wear like a size 10, that's going to be the bulk of your um, inventory. So the same concept on these pools, um, it's a decentralized platform. And what that really means is that there's no company in the middle, okay? There's no company in the middle that you buy and sell to, right? In fact, it's just a whole bunch of different people decentralized in nature, meaning they don't know each other. They live across the world. They, they, you know, no one person knows the other person in terms of sellers. 
right? But all these people, they pull their money together. They pull their Ethereum together. They put it on Uniswap so that other people or themselves, there's an abundance of Ethereum and possibly, let's say, Chainlink, this other crypto. There's an abundance of them so that they can be able to swap and trade them back and forth. And, you know, uh, the person who deposited into that pool, they'll earn their fair share of the fees and, the, you know, pool fees overall. So let me see, it's a couple questions that popped up into the chat. Uh, but yeah, you, you basically have to pull those things together. Let's see. I'll miss a couple questions. What do I think about KuCoin? Um, I'm solid on KuCoin. I'm actually gonna go over KuCoin in a little bit. Um, I have it pulled up up there. Uh, can we move coins from centralized to decentralized? Yes, you certainly can. So if you have coins on Coinbase or another centralized place, you just have to remove them from that platform by sending it to your own wallet, um, you know, your own um, platform. Now, your, your question, I don't want to confuse you just by the way you ask the question, because you ask, can we move coins from centralized to decentralized? Decentralized platforms don't actually hold your coins for you, okay? The better question is just moving coins from a centralized uh, platform to your own custody. And in that, uh, that example is similar to Am I putting my money in the bank or am I putting it under my mattress and leaving it in a box or whatever, right? Um, so decentralized platforms do not actually hold your crypto for you like centralized platforms do, okay? Decentralized platforms are literally just a interface that connects to your wallet where your coins are safely being stored, okay? They just connect to your wallet and is reading that information. Um, and then whenever you're actually about to make a transaction, it asks for your permission. And that's when uh, you will pay the fee, et cetera, et cetera. All right, I hope that answered your question. Uh, someone said, not sure if you went over this, but you think BTC is gonna buy some advances again. Yeah, I'm gonna go back on, um, I'm gonna I'm go over the technical analysis. Not bad about that. Um, but overall in these pools, like I said, you're putting money into, you're pulling your money together and then you earn the fees that are made within that pool, your fair share of it. So I'll put my money to work in that. And then farming is like this. So farming, I'll put my money like I'm pooling it, right? But my my rewards are in these different cryptos. So if I wanna, you know, get some curve or get some whatever this is, I don't even know. Um, you know, I may put my money into a pool that rewards in that different crypto. And now I'm able to earn my 5.8% in this crypto as opposed to, you know, just earning five point two percent on top of the crypto I already deposited. Uh, so this is another cool way to uh, to kind of yeah earn some free crypto uh, and also earn some different crypto um, by leveraging the existing crypto that you do have. All right, does that make sense to everyone? Just uh, you know, put a one in the chat or something if that makes sense to y'all. All right. I see we got one person that understood it. Why wow, everybody had fat fingers, I see. <laughs> uh, someone trying to get in? Yeah, I'm, I'm admitting people in now. Everyone should be in now. Okay, so look, um, from this one platform, y'all, I'm able to go ahead and put my money to work 
at the end of the day, the whole freedom thing that we're all chasing here is understanding how to put your money to work for you as opposed to trading your hours for money. That that's the biggest difference, right? We most 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 people trade hours for dollars, but in fact, we want to keep our hours and we actually want to put our dollars to work so it can give us more hours cuz the <laughs> your wealth is only calculated by time meaning how much time you can live without doing nothing, like live off of your current um, amount of money. Um, And so you got to give yourself more time. You have to use your money in a way that will give you more time in the future. Uh, So this is a great platform for you to go ahead and do all of that. You can also, uh, you know, just deposit your money into platforms to go ahead and save and earn some uh, APY. Um, yeah, it looks like I got some synthetics and some uh, chain link uh, on Ave. Um, yeah, I have some synthetics on Ave that's earning some APY. Yes, I will go over charts in a minute. Like, everyone's just worried about charts but i'm telling y'all yeah i gotta understand the whole story to get to really understand what's happening on these charts um but on this aspect i'm just showing y'all overall like how to be your own bank in crypto how to kind of normalize your moves in crypto and and go about it because a lot of people was hitting me up when things was falling from 60 like oh i know you down right now da 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 no, the fuck I'm not. I've actually made more money on the pullback from 60 than on the pump up to 60. So (laughs) overall, like I'm kind of showing y'all how to, um, you know, not be too overexposed when things are pulling back. Of course, knowing when to notice when things are pulling back, but being able to leverage other things other than, you know, just pressing sell on MT4 to able to make you some money regardless on if it's pumping or or not uh the call is being recorded yeah it is being recorded um we're we're gonna drop all the recordings um one of these days we'll let you guys know about that uh zirion is pretty much the same platform i won't go into zirion as much but there is a key difference uh, on Zerion that I want to show y'all. Oh, Zerion is allowing debit cards and credit cards. This is new. This is the first time uh, that this popped up for me. Oh, and you, you can do exchanges or the Ethereum wallet. So this is solid, right? Like I said, like you, you're putting your money to work for you. So crypto exchange your deposit oh wow they're giving a lot of different ways to go ahead and put some money into here so basically all you do is deposit some money into here whether in the form of uh, crypto or u.s dollars like you just saw they they allow you to deposit with uh, with uh, your debit card or credit card so put some money on there right you can come in here and click invest. This is the portion that I like about Zerion a bit more. There's crypto indexes. If you guys know anything about indexes, you know this is clutch. There is crypto indexes where you can buy one token and it represents a multitude of cryptos. Okay, and you, you can see from the 90 days like how some of them have been down. But shoot, this MetaVest NFT index have been shooting up. And this is what these uh, indexes mean or what they are. This is just a basket or a collection of multiple cryptocurrencies. And these are their percentage shares within that basket. Okay, so if one crypto shoots up 100%, another one drops 50%, you're up 50% for the day, as opposed to you having been in one and then that was the one that actually dropped for the whole day. All right, these indexes will help you gain exposure into all of these different cryptos by just holding one crypto. 
Um, damn, this thing had dropped to what sixty five cents. Yes, I, I do have a class on NFTs, um, and I, I'll do one, uh, but it might be in that in the paid group. So make sure y'all get on this. Like this overall, like the time I'm taking to show y'all the overall stuff is just just in case people wanna you know learn by themselves or make some stuff. I'm giving y'all the general idea, uh, but uh, if you wanna get directly to the nitty gritty. <laughs> Yo, I want to show y'all something, son, because still to this day, I am fucking blown as to why the hell I didn't buy these socks. My bad to jump off the damn subject, but look, because I just saw it in here. You want to see a pair of socks that cost $100,000? Bruh, $107,000 for this here was technically like the first NFT. For literally a pair of socks, you can you can buy the NFT and you can uh, basically turn it in for this pair of socks. But bro, with the NFT craze, the shit took off. The thing was at like fifty bucks, forty bucks of March of last year. I'm pretty sure y'all all got a hundred bucks in y'all pockets right now, or at least in your bank account, whatever. The thing took off crazy. Went to a high of like 200K, 150K. Like, that's crazy for a pair of socks, bro. A pair of socks. You you legit can, yeah, 161K for this NFT, which was literally a pair of socks. And uh, one big thing that made it like that is uh, they don't have air. Was just the amount uh, of these socks that actually um, was available, uh, but bro, like the <laughs> yeah, you know socks. This shit, there's a shirt portion too. Yeah, that's the thing was that there was only like 300 of them available, and anytime actually there was more. Anytime it was redeemed, it took away one from circulation. It took it out of thing. So. Yeah, there was 500 initially. Um, 198 of them have been redeemed. 14 of them are in pools. But that, <laughs> bro, you got to understand, like, where does this shit stop? Like, somebody randomly created 500 socks, digital socks online, and put some good marketing behind it. And now one of these socks is worth over 100 grand. That's why, I like, uh, I'm just speechless on that aspect. But it, that's the craziness of this space. Could be good, could be bad. I, this here, I don't think is good overall, unless it represents something, right? Like, what the hell do these socks do? Nothing, right? There's, there's nothing that they do. And again, you it's the nft that's worth this much but if you turn it in um if you turn it to, you know redeem that nft you'll get just a pair of socks nothing else um her folks have bought houses contract on nft yes um see here's the thing you don't really need an nft to do that type of transaction right to put things into escrow. For those of you who had purchased properties, purchased houses or whatever, uh, your house, your money or whatever would go into escrow while the house is being looked at, being you know audited, whatever. Um, all of that can be created with just a Ethereum smart contract, okay? Anything where a, um, anything to, you know, that involves like, a contract or money or would need lawyers or whatever you can build all of that up and uh on an ethereum smart contract you don't necessarily need an nft a nft is just an easy way to show ownership of something right so let me give you an example the mona lisa painting right let's say is worth 
a million dollars. I know it's worth more than that, but let's say it's worth a million dollars. That's a painting that has history, can be appreciated, et cetera, et cetera, but it's not for sale. It's actually just in, in a museum on display. So it would be great if there was a investment opportunity into the Mona Lisa where let's say they made 10 Mona Lisa NFTs and each one of them was worth $100,000, which represent a 10th of the Mona Lisa's price. But then every time the Mona Lisa rises in value, then that NFT will rise in value too. You get what I mean? So it will track, um, yeah, it will track the price of that, that real world uh, concept. Yeah, I know it could be a little confusing, but let me let me put this in perspective because I think it's the whole uh, non-fungible thing that people don't understand. If I give you a $20 bill, and of course I want my $20 back, I'm not expecting you to give me the same $20 bill that I gave you, right? You're going to obviously had spent that $20 bill and then some way, somehow, got another $20 bill. And that's perfectly equivalent to the first one that I gave you. That is fungible. That's fungibility. That's being able to have a representation of the same thing carry the same value. So the same $100 bill that I got in my wallet is the same $100 bill and value that any one of you guys have in your wallets. So that's fungible. Non-fungible is where it's a unique piece of property. It's a unique collectible. It's unique in its own way, right? So if I handed you the Mona Lisa as collateral for something or, you know, to borrow, or if I handed you my Yu-Gi-Oh cards or whatever to borrow, I want the same one back. Like, Yes, all right, with the Yu-Gi-Oh cards, yes, there's multiple ones that are the same, right? But I don't want nobody else's, like I want my own. But with the Mona Lisa example, there's only one of one of it, right? The The concept of non-fungible is that this is the unique one. There's only a limited number or there's actually only just one and you know, even with the socks or whatever, it could be one of 500 or number 10 of 500. So if I handed you the number one of 500 and you try to hand me number 10 of 500, I don't want that because I want the number one one. That's the one that I gave to you. So that's non-fungible is that every single uh, piece of art or whatever thing that you want to make non-fungible is unique in its own way and has its own value and representation that no other token or card or whatever it is piece of art uh, will have. It won't have the same properties. There may be you know, hundreds of copies made of the same thing, but even in a digital sense, they're not the same because one came after the other. So again with the socks 500 of them were made but the number one one you know number one out of 500 and number 500 out of 500 are not the same okay so i hope that clears it up a little bit more with fungible and non-fungible because that's simply what it is uh that's that's all it is all right so my bad on this socks thing but <laughs> i saw it on the on the decks and I had to bring it up cause bruh, like it was at 40 bucks last year. Um, and now it's at a hundred K. So that should show you guys like the, the potential of this space, but no, um, I really like uh, these um, indexes because again, like I said, by just buying one of these at a dollar fifty four, whatever, I might wait till it dips again and grab some of this. All right. Um, as these individual tokens within it grow, the overall index itself grows. 
uh, so you can go ahead and invest in anything. So all of these are DeFi indexes and they may be made up of different DeFi projects or made up of a different um, percentage within the project, uh, within the, uh, the thing. So this has 63% sushi, 25% Ave. Oh, it's Ave interest bearing YFI. So it's YFI that is on the Ave platform and it's earning interest. That's what that means. So um, you can go ahead and be like, oh, I like, let's see if they have, I doubt they have a dog index. Um, okay, so they do have everything. Uh, let me give you all the overall. So in this invest section, they're going to have different categories, DeFi index, DeFi blue chips, NFTs, uh, layer two scaling tokens, uh, I really recommend y'all looking up layer two scaling tokens because um, these are the tokens that are fighting to primarily get Ethereum's business um, and providing a layer two solution for them. I was heavy on Matic, uh, formerly known as Poly. Well, it's known as Polygon now, formerly known as Matic. What's wrong with my boy? My bad, y'all. My dog is tweaking. Um, but these layer two tokens, they're they're uh, trying to solve the, uh, you know, the gas problem that Ethereum has, and and uh, different problems that other blockchains have, um, interoperability, etc. Uh, but I think Matic is going to win out in this category. Uh, but yeah, they have a whole bunch of different. Um, categories of, of uh, tokens. The indexes um, are what I'm like most interested in. Um, there's a, a top 10 index. Uh, well, these are just DeFi. They have more indexes. Um, I don't know why just the DeFi ones are popping up. But okay, we'll, we'll just go through the uh, DeFi ones. But you can go ahead and come here and invest in the top five, top 10 DeFi projects, all right? And uh, be able to be exposed into that um, arena without without you uh, having to pick and choose the different projects. I would uh, suggest that you guys um, filter this by market cap, so y'all can uh, get into the projects that are that have a higher market cap overall. Uh, but this one is a solid one. Um, I think I purchased some of this on my other account. Uh, where I can be exposed into all of these cryptos without actually buying each single one of them. All right, so if you put in $317, it, this is basically what you'll have um, in your thing. And you don't have to invest the full amount. You can buy fractional um, portions of this uh, index. All right. All right, so enough of this. Um, there's a whole bunch of these types of platforms out there. We'll go over them um, in the actual class. All right, I know most of y'all just wanna look at the charts. So let's take a look at what's going on. All right, um, if you were on my last call, um, I kind of explained I kind of explained how I came up with my zones and my boxes. Um, this zone that we've been in was made up from this uh, pullback um, and support that was found here around that 28, 29,000 level. 
uh, let's fast forward to what we've been dealing with now. Um, I, I've always told um, some of my students that, hey, during the summer months, crypto tends to go sideways. And, um, you know, it's, it's towards the end of the summer and the fall that we start to pick up gain again. And we should see at least 100K this December. That's what I'm uh, projecting with with Bitcoin. Even if I just did it to here. Yeah, my 2.0 is at 100K. My TP would be here though. So I usually take 618 to 618. Which would make some sense because, yeah, I will take this entry here. All right, so um, we have just been moving sideways within this zone. And as you can see, this zone has been respected, like even to the wicks, um, so many times over. So whenever we're at the bottom of the zone, I'm bullish for us to shoot up. If I see that we're not getting any um, indication that we're going lower, so um, you know this was called for us to look at the rejection at 40k. Uh, so that rejection zone is you know, from like 40 to 42k. Like you know, let me draw a small box here just to give you guys an idea. that like things, I mean, things and trading is not always going to be true, like to a T. Um, so this zone up here, I want to see us kind of bounce within or above um, and sustain that for, you know, my indicators, are, uh, I always use the 30 minute uh, candle, uh, 30 minute time frame. I mean, and I will take a look at what type of activity I'm getting. So my resistance on the, that I wanna see it break, you know, was, is obviously this 40K and I'm gonna take this out for a minute. So it was this, this 40, you know, basically 41K. We shot up above it and I want us to I want us to find support above it and this is actually a good bullish sign that it is finding some support above it. Of course I'm still giving it some time, right? I'm giving it some time um you know waiting for the larger time frames to close out, right? Just to see where we're going going to end up uh if this like this here is bullish to me because we're not falling back down into the zone, okay? At least temporarily. We had this uptrend that we were following and when we fell out of it, I told y'all we fell out of it, but wait for the retest of that bottom of the trend zone. So we shot back up above the the uptrend and shot up above our 40k 41k resistance at the same time in this little area right here so that's a bullish sign and we did it on higher than you know usual volume which is another good sign we did that and um Yes, we have the uptrend and would have loved to see it continue up on the uptrend. Then, yeah, that's ultimate bullishness because we're not even coming down to retest this uh, 41K support. Do understand that trend lines are also supporting resistances. So if it would have found support above this trend line and continued on, that is a bullish sign that it found support above that trend line and also above the that uh, resistance point of that 41k. Another good sign was that we fell from the trend line, which is fine because trends get broken all the time. Uh, it might be forming a new one, uh, but we didn't fall through that 41k 
uh, resistance turning into support now. So that's a bullish sign again for me. Yes, we got up above the trend line and yes, we did break below it. So you would be a little bearish, but we did not break below this 41K, you know, 40.9, um, you know, K resistance or support. We, we are actually still above it. And this is on the 30 minute candle. These are all 30 minute candles. So this is very bullish to me. Okay, if we were going to fall back down below it, we would have fell below it. Like you see how violent these pullbacks are. Um, you get big candles off of them. So we didn't get any of that yet. Matter of fact, on a small scale, we're forming a little double bottom, um, as I can see here. It's nothing crazy, it's nothing crazy, but we're forming like a double bottom, which is very healthy um, to see on here uh, because we're getting that support above here. So with that being said, right, uh, we'll get back to my cursor. So if we do um, get some support here, and this is a, a double bottom that is forming, I'd look to take my longs this way. And my target is here. And we got a almost six to one ratio. Um, yeah, so I would wait, actually, I would wait till we break above here. This is like the, the for sure type of trade in a sense. Um, well, nothing's for sure, but you know what I mean. The, the, the more like, hey, you've waited for all your confirmations before you enter the trade. This is where I would enter the trade um, when we're about to break this last high, because then we would put in a new high uh, on this uptrend, right? Um, a break above there. And like I said, we're going to touch 50K real easily because we don't have any. Let me reset this. We don't have much of anything happening here, maybe besides this at around 45K, um, which round numbers are psychological numbers. The half ones are, again, psychological numbers like 45K, 35, 25. Those are psychological numbers that has a lot of trading within them, um, especially in crypto. Uh, so I'm looking for us to touch 50K really easily. We haven't had much trading in this area. Um, this year from February to May, um, a four month span or whatever, that's how long we've ever been up here, period. And, and, and Bitcoin's whole history is the highest we've ever been. So there's not a lot of trading activity up here. Um, this look like it might be a support or resistance because the price is below it. Um, but it may not, it's definitely not a strong one because we don't have a lot of trading activity that has ever happened in this area. So I'm looking for us to touch 50K real easily and for us to get back up above to 60K shortly after that. Um, so let me jump back to that 30 minute. So I'm still waiting because obviously you can see we're still pulling back. Um, I'm still waiting to see how we react uh, at around this 40, 40 40.9 level, 41K level. Uh, this is what you want to look for. Once it approaches that level, see where your volume is, right? Are you getting a lot of volume that's leaving the space? Uh, are you getting huge red candles as it's approaching that? That will That's another indication that things will pull back. Or are you getting, you know, doji candles or you're getting... Uh, lots of uh, wicks or whatever on your candles from the bottom, right? Getting bought up similar to these. Um, that would be an indication that uh, things are going bullish, going back bullish. So essentially 
you do want to take your trade as close uh, to this line as possible. Um, so if we're running a bit more risky play, um, you want to take your position for the buy as close to this as possible um, after you've noticed that you're you're rejecting or you're finding support above that line, okay? And some of the best ways to look uh, for it is those wicks, um, is you know, knowing your candles, your your um, shooting stars, your doji candle, um, knowing your reversal candles will really help you a lot with, with knowing if you're going to reverse from from a position or not. Okay, so I would say check out the, the candle Bible and um, or just Google reversal um, candles and uh, start understanding that. Uh, once you start seeing reversal candles, you pop in your entry um, and yeah, 50K is the target. You might do one target at 45, but um, yeah, 50K is your target. And yeah, the candle Bible is lit. Um, make sure y'all get up on that. Um, now, let's look at things on the reverse side. Um, this here could be uh, another false breakout. Um, where could we end up at? So, there is a lower trend forming here. And for, for all my newbies too, especially with you guys that are new with drawing trend lines and stuff like that, trend lines are subjective to you, right? You and what you see. So um, for me, uh, the, there are characteristics to a trend line, which I'm gonna have a call on that as well um, to show you guys how to uh, properly draw those. But uh, the more touches you could get on a line, the more valid that trend line is okay the more touches you could get on that trend line the more valid that it is so when you're drawing your trend lines uh, like you see I had my trend line up here basically um, I was getting some touches and it still works this way too um, but there you got to understand that there might be a, another trend line that is forming at a much lower level Okay, so keep that in mind that you may have two trends um, that are um, happening and you may have to go ahead and keep both in mind. Something like that. Just, just to give you guys perspective on, hey, your trend line may not look like the next person's because they may see uh, the trend differently but just as long as your trend line, if your trend line gets a lot of touches or as many touches as you can get it to get, that will be uh, something that's valid. That's going to be a valid uh, uh, trend line for you to use. But the reason I put the second one down here is because if you're aware of that second trend that's happening, if price falls below this one, you now know that you have a couple places where price may end up. If price breaks this trend line, you may get caught at this resistance, right? This support right here, which is that 40K that's been holding up for a while, right? We've been in this box for a minute, okay? So price shot up above that trend line. It's now finding support above it for right now. For right now, it's finding support above it. Things are looking good, right? But we're still weary because we're on very low volume, okay? Very low volume. Um, as you guys can see, we had huge volume spike and that spike took us over that resistance. That's what you wanna see. When I was talking about the, the whole momentum thing and using the volume to see, this, like look how much volume this is in comparison to the volume you were getting before, right? So um, the same thing is true here though. We're approaching this support line, but we don't have a lot of volume um, that are supporting us. We don't have a lot of volume that's coming in. 
it's not necessarily a good thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing, okay? Seeing low volumes as price is coming down and about to find a support is actually a good thing. So let's look at this. Uh, price fell, right? It fell on higher volume, right? Higher than the previous volume, okay? And it got caught by this uptrend. As you can see, that we had, you know, every time price fell out of the, the top trend, it got caught by the bottom trend. Fell, got caught. Fell, got caught. Um, fell again, got caught. So that's why I say you got to make sure to know where that second uh, trend line is because that could be your next targets, right? So uh, when this actually did fall and got caught on the second trend line, um, we had high, higher than usual volume uh, that helped push it down, okay? It helped push it down. So let me get a little closer for some of y'all so y'all can see it, okay? So let's say this is the same situation we're at right now. Price is approaching that top of the trend line. We're getting really low volume on that, right? But we're not panicking. This is, we're just seeing what's happening, right? What, what you trying to do next? Um, it's sitting on top of that trend, but then it just drops, right? We have high volume of people leaving the space, right? Of, of people exchanging Bitcoin for their USD. There's high volumes of that. So the price drops, uh, but it gets caught by this trend. And it's almost like, you know, it was drawn there for it, all right? It, it get caught by the trend. We're getting some better volume that's incoming. And then as that volume upticks, price action, you know, the price shoots up as well, okay? So what this tells us is that as price is approaching a particular support area, a uptrend, whatever, you want to look at the volume, see if we're getting one red or green volume and how much and how much, you know, compared to the last little bit of volume we've been getting. So right now I'm seeing we're on low volume, which is kind of similar to here. But as you can see, the very next two candles took us all the way down to that next uh, support area. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to wait. We're going to wait and see if our next two or three candles, the zone of 30 minute, are going to be green or red and how much, right? It, like basically this is your, your level of, of uh, your level to look for. Like, hey, did it break this 292? And all I did was just, this is the last highest little, thing that we had we had this as well but locally like most recently this is the highest piece of volume that we had so can we break this this um, piece of volume and will it be red or green will it be a bullish candle or a bearish one um, will it be volume coming in or volume going out it's that simple um, just just try to it's a game of probabilities. Uh, what are the probabilities that will stay above here, right? What, what are the chances that um, we'll be able to find support here and, and shoot up to 50K? Now, if we do fall below this uptrend, you do have this uh, support here at that 41K, um, you know, that it was previously resistance. Uh, but could be support now because we're obviously on top of it. Uh, if we miss that, then we have we could get caught by this uptrend down here. So for a sell play, oh shoot, wrong one. Yeah, I probably wouldn't take myself from there until there. I mean, yeah, this isn't really 
worth it per se unless you were taking it to the 35 target. And even then, that's a three to one, four to one ratio. Um, All right, so uh, here's what I did. Um, of course, like I was telling y'all, there's the probability of us breaking down from this uptrend and uh, getting caught on this 41K to then go higher. So you wanna keep that in mind if you wanna take a short on this. Keep in mind that you have 41K, you know, roughly 40.9K that uh, can act as a support for the price. Um, if we do break that 40K, you know, 41K level, uh, you do have this uptrend uh, from here that you guys can draw on your own charts that uh, can catch the price, right? It's a safety net, it may be able to catch the price. So that could be your, your target as well. Um, you know, if it came straight down right now, it'd be roughly 39.9. But the thing is, the more this goes sideways, the higher this uptrend actually goes. All right, so uh, keep you have to keep those things in mind. And then lastly, if, if all those fail, you know, I'm looking at 35K um, as that target, that middle target for the sell. Okay, so we're at that critical point right now, just to summarize things, we're at that critical point where we're in a wait and see game. Um, you want to wait and see if we stay above this trend line. If we break below it, it's not the end all be all because we have to see if we'll stay above uh, this 41K box. Um, resistance turn support, hopefully. A little white dot that I just put there. Uh, we'll see if we'll uh, find support above there, right? Monitor your volumes as it approaches these support or resistance levels. High volume means that it has high momentum to you know do whatever that is about to do according to that volume candle. So if it's a green one, that's high volume for it to shoot up. If it's a red one, that is high volume for it to you know shoot down like this. So as it approaches these support or resistance levels, you look for that overall volume and, and momentum that's being created. Damn, this green candle is ridiculous right here. Y'all see that? So um, overall, are those the only indicators that I use? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, I'm gonna show y'all. And I would use the... Uh, the EMAs. I'll do two of them. Um, oh, shoot. Well, you could use just that. Uh, it's actually the moving average. If you want to put in your own moving averages. So let me do that. So my favorite uh, MA crosses, especially for a short time frame, are the eight, and I'll make the eight uh, green. Get a little thick so y'all can see it. And then 14, and I'll make that one red. So the 14 day, and make sure everything is closed on the source. Um, and if you look at that, I mean, every time it crosses, green crosses above red, take it for the buy. You got that buy. Green cross below, take it for the sell. 
um, you get to sell. But of course, this isn't the end all be all on things. Um, you still have to understand other factors. Uh, when you do the EMA, now the EMAs, they actually give you uh, the 20 day, the 200 and the 50. Um, so I would make my 200 white, I'll make my 20 day um, either blue or green. Let's go green and this is red. Ish. All right. All right. So your 200 moving average is like your ultimate support slash resistance, like your ultimate. Um, let's go on the daily. And this is why I always say like, yo, put in something and then go to the history and see how it, it played a part um, in the history. So the last time we had a big pump, was in 17. So let's use 17 to kind of help us understand how these indicators, um, you know, work. Is that similar to alligator? Um, no. I mean, alligator did use, I think there's an actual indicator called alligator um, and it does use moving averages. Um, actually, I hated the alligator because the alligator shit, especially for the small uh, time frames and the smaller moving averages, it didn't work. Um, I actually did when I was teaching it to people, I did tweak the numbers to these actual moving averages. So yes, you can think of it as if it's the alligator, but um, it, it doesn't use the same numbers as the alligator. The eight and 14, has worked well for me um, with with uh, the smaller time frames uh, primarily. The smaller the number in terms of the uh, the EMA, um, the better they work for small time frames. Um, so if you're using a 200 EMA, I would use that on a larger uh, time frame. Oh, you say you got your alligator set to eight and fourteen? Well, solid. Um, somebody was t telling you the right shit. It might have been one of us. Um, but anyway, uh, pop it in. Uh, the EMAs are like really using is that 8 and 14 for smaller, and then the 50 and the uh, 200 for larger analysis and time frames. All right. I primarily like to focus on the 200 because that's where you can catch your bigger moves at. All right. The 200 plays that ultimate support and resistance uh, EMA for you. So as you can see, yes, the green here is that 20, the red is that uh, uh, 50. When you get across of those two, it's almost it's always lights out. You always want to look for when those two cross for the price to kind of catch support around the 200 EMA, right? And it kind of did, and then it fell through that that's, uh, support. Um, rose up above it, but just basically playing around it uh, until it became a resistance throughout the whole bear market. Uh, it wasn't until good old April 1st, <laughs> I remember this day, to a T, uh, that we broke out of uh, this, this downtrend that we were in, this low parabola. And as you can see, as well, I was bullish on this day, we got a cross of the 50, I mean, of the 20 above the 50, right? The green line above the red line, and then both lines went above the 200 EMA, okay? Even if you took your trades here, you're still gonna be up. On that alligator shit, like the move would have been made already and then it starts to cross. And I'm like, it, it, <laughs> this thing is really laggy overall. Um, you know, it, again, you start seeing the, the volume starts to pile in, you get the crosses on your EMAs, your EMAs cross one another. Uh, that's a, a bullish instinct, a bullish, uh, you know, um, indicator that, hey, we're going back um, to pumping. And we have, since we made this cross here, right? Uh, two lines crossing above the 200 and also price, 
we've just been pumping. Um, even after we somewhat fall below it, we're still on a bullish stance. Of course, there's other factors like this was Corona um, on March 2020 that when the markets just fell, um, that will uh, cause for the price action to do as such. And that's why I say like you, you can't take these indicators as end all be alls because you still have to factor in what the hell is happening in the world into your analysis so you can know um, how to go about things. Um, but just for this purpose, um, yeah, these indicators are what works for me, especially in the crypto space. Um, yeah, even right now, you see on the daily, we're just about to get that cross um, above the 200. Uh, let me look at four hour just to show you guys. Um, I'll take away this uptrend line. Yeah, we just got the cross of these two lines, um, the, fit, the 20 and the 50, uh, and they're both crossing above the 200. And shit, it's already pumping crazy already. Yeah, be up 22% uh, or 700 something pips. So overall, this will give you an indication on when things are about to turn. Um, but as long as, you know, we're resist, we're getting resistance on that, that 200, the 200 is the one that I like the most um, because I, I swing trade mo most of my stuff anyway. Use the eight and 14 if you're using it for smaller time frames, um, and just wait for the crosses. Uh, do the crosses and have your zones set, meaning your resistance support zones have those set as well. Uh, as you can see too, that trend line that I had on there, uh, that trend line kind of coincides with the 200 a little bit, uh, at least on the 30. See that, there's the 200 line, the one that's going crooked in and out, right? Uh, and then the straight line is just my trend line. It's more like right here. Um, so the 200 EMA naturally is a support for the price. Um, well, you know, when it's close, meaning like prices in close proximity of the 200 and stuff like that, you want to look for your targets, like to take your your uh, positions as close to the 200 as possible if you want to play that game. Um, but yeah, if y'all got any questions on this, let me know. But it's just simply the uh, 200, um, the 50, and maybe the 20. Use the eight and fourteen for smaller time frames. Um, you know, smaller moves. I mean, the eight and fourteen will still work on bigger ones. Um, don't get it twisted. You're just gonna have more frequent eight and fourteen crosses. Um, yeah, even if we look at the daily, we got a cross on there, which is really bullish. So, those are the only things that. I really use. Um, here's my thing that I said on the last call. Um, make sure you understand the basics, uh, at least understanding where your support and resistance areas are, and then put some indicators to either support or deny your, your thought process. Um, don't simply rely on indicators because you will lose out a whole bunch more than you'll win if you simply just use indicators. Um, I will jump to, actually, we'll just keep it at, at BTC for right now. I haven't done any analysis on ETH, but I know ETH is kind of moving the same way. Yeah. And ETH look like it might fall. So we got up to our resistance line, that orange line, and we got some dojis, like we're getting some rejection here. Um, 
and we're going on declining volume. So I'm expecting a pullback here on ETH 2289 level um, at the very least, you know. And that all too is dependent on what Bitcoin does. Uh, Bitcoin does move the market, so keep that in mind. Um, but I can easily see Bitcoin just pulling back to the top of this before shooting all the way up. Um, like I said, this is bullish. If this was going to be a false breakout, like it would have fell back into the zone already. Uh, but the fact that it's finding its footing above here, that is a bullish sign to me. Um, but again, we could we could just fall back into it. Um, that, that's not an end all be all. I'm just leaning towards more the bullish side than the bearish side because we are this is, this is the most activity we've had above here in months. Um, as you can see, like this is all the way back to May. So this is the most activity we're having up here. So that's a bullish sign to me and looks like it's another. Well, this flag just got broken out. Uh, no, the volume indicator should just be how it is. Um, uh, you don't have to change anything on it. I don't even think you can change anything on it. Yeah, so volume should just be volume. Oh, I guess you can. So I guess you can put a moving average on here. Does it show you the line? Yeah, it does. So this can, I remember this. Um, you can pull the volume moving average on here just to kind of show the same way that you would put a moving average on the price. You, would, you could put a moving average on the, uh, the volume. And moving averages is just uh, based off of the period that you put. It's just averaging, um, let's say I put 10, right? It's just averaging the volume from the past 10 days and from the previous 10 days and kind of giving you an indication on where things should be. So in a sense, like that orange line that you see is the median average, is the middle average of where, um, uh, of where price should be. Uh, so if volume candles are below it, just think of it as uh, below average and above it is above average. So you're getting above average, um, above average uh, um, volume coming in, that's always going to be a bullish sign. If you're getting below average volume going in, you're either gonna go down or you're going sideways in the uh, grand scheme of things. So uh, yeah, you could put the, you could put the moving average indicator on there um, and you can, you know, do it for the past two weeks. Uh, do understand these uh, MAs are for days. So, well, not days, they're for periods. So I could be, so this 14 just simply means the previous 14 30 minute candles or the previous 14 four hour candles. Um, so it's it's gonna put, it's gonna calculate the past 14 or the past 10, past 20, whatever I put for that uh, MA, it's gonna calculate the past 10 volume sticks and give me an average of where, you know, the median uh, volume should be, um, should be at, all right. All right, is there any other questions? Um, I've been on here a little bit too long. So now, <laughs> y'all got any other questions before I dip? Um, I'm gonna do an analysis for this upcoming uh, week or so. Yeah, we were real bullish right now. But it's funny, I, I still think we're going to come back and retouch this because that usually happens. Yeah, 
Yeah, between now 30, 35 and 36. All right, my thoughts on XRP. Like trading it or investing in it? Please be specific. Investing? Ooh. Um, I don't like XRP. There, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. All right, so let me break it down this one way and let's just talk about it logically. XRP is being used for cross-border payments. Let's say I'm trying to send some money to my family in Mexico. That means that my US dollars is being converted into the XRP token. And then once it gets to Mexico, it has to be converted from XRP to pesos. Here's one question that no XRP supporter can ever you know, uh, answer. Who's going to buy XRP in Mexico or Sri Lanka or Indonesia? What use case does XRP has have in those corners of the world? Matter of fact, you should check to see the volume that of, of exchange that XRP are doing in those parts of the world. If no one is able to convert my XRP to pesos, it's going to be rendered useless. It has to be, that type of transaction has to be done in a currency that everybody would want, right? The reason you could send the US dollar everywhere is because there's a use case for it and it can be exchanged everywhere. Who the hell is exchanging pesos for XRP? I don't know. Last time I checked, there was about a thousand dollars worth of trading done for the between the X uh, between XRP and the Mexican pesos. A thousand dollars, meaning if I want to send twelve hundred dollars, two hundred of it can't even. There's not even enough trading volume to exchange it. This concept does apply to every coin, but each coin has a different amount of transactions or trades that it's doing in each corner of the world. And plus each coin is not trying to, you know, do what XRP is doing with being a cross border payment system. It just makes no sense to me. Um, I, I do understand they're saying like, oh, it's the banks that will be transacting amongst one another, et cetera, et cetera. The banks are trying to create their own um, you know, central bank digital dollars, CBDCs. They're trying to create their own. So why would they utilize XRPs? Now, XRP had the partnership with MoneyGram, but because of the lawsuit, they lost that. All right, they lost that um, um, thing with MoneyGram. So overall, and I, you know, me personally, I haven't done any late, uh, any uh, research into XRP lately, and I may be wrong on a lot of things, and they might have improved a lot of things, but it still comes back to the age-old question of who's exchanging XRP for, you know, insert national currency here, like who's exchange like who's actually utilizing it if only the banks are using it and you know it's being advertised for them and shit like that like what local person local merchant would 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 be using it now this is why bitcoin i am very bullish on and keep telling y'all to focus on that quit neglecting bitcoin 
because Bitcoin is utilized across the world. If there's an increase in popularity for Bitcoin, when people think crypto, they think Bitcoin. That's not to say anything else won't survive, right? Um, there's a huge uh, use case for uh, for Ethereum and and other cryptos. Um, there's they have their own use case, but Bitcoin is the granddaddy of them all. Like there's a reason why it's at number one, and there's a real necessity and use case and and just overall brand recognition when it comes to that that anyone would want to exchange for or out of bitcoin right there would always be a lot more um exchanging that's happening for a currency that is well known well used well needed um you know actually solves a problem uh, especially if you look at Venezuela or other countries where their currencies are going to zero, those people need something to transact in. Okay, so if if there's no use case for that coin and you're you know that particular part of the world, um, then how is it going to survive? How is it going to benefit for what it's being used for? All right? How how is XRP ever going to solve the problem of remittances and exchange of money if no one's looking to exchange for xrps now i do hope the price of xrp does well because i know a lot of people that got into it with the root uh i think i still have some xrp nothing crazy nothing crazy i think shit like you have to keep like 20 into in your account or something like that like or you can't send 20 from an account. Hey, look, that's some BS in itself too, that it's programmed into their code for 20 XRP tokens to always stay in somebody's um, account. Yeah, that's the fuckery in itself as well. Like, makes no sense. Um, and not to mention that for what XRP is trying to do, not only are there other cryptos that are in that space and doing a better job like Stellar Lumens, but um, you can do the same thing with cryptos that aren't advertising, you know, cross-border payments and remittances as their number one, you know, use case. You could still do all of that with Bitcoin, but it's not being advertised for you to use that for Bitcoin, right? So it, it's one of those things where like, I see a lot more downside for Ripple than upside. Um, and those that has been in the space for a while, you'll understand why. Um, for the newbies, like, I don't know why Ripple is just something so easy for, like, most people that don't know much about crypto and just gets into it, it's like they know two things, Bitcoin and Ripple. <laughs> and it makes no sense to me. And it's like, how'd you jump to Ripple? Like, you skip so many other good cryptos but um yeah you say you have stellar too i mean that that's solid um you know stake them somewhere earn some interest on them like for me i'm looking for the next google the next you know amazon like i'm looking for the next big crypto companies i can already tell you i you know two of them bitcoin and ethereum for good measure and I'm not going to say the third is XRP, even though XRP may have, um, you know, may have a higher market cap. Shoot, Dogecoin has a higher market cap than most projects that are doing better than it. That means nothing, though, because that's just based off of hype, based off of people buying into stuff that they don't even know about. So um, then you have to look at the development the use case across the world, right? Um, how it's how it's being welcomed into society. Uh, that, that's all I'm saying. Because it went from a fraction to where it's at now. Yeah, um, I mean, 
you'll be able to make a lot of money into crypto if you're um, if you have a plan and you you trade and invest according to your plan. Um, things will always rise in price because the overall space is small, right? So every single cryptocurrency in the world put together is worth less than Apple, which is one company and one market. Like, I, I, I really want y'all to put things in perspective like that. Like, every single crypto out there is worth less than one company. One single company out of all the damn companies in the world. Um, in fact, sure, I think during the bear market, Apple had more cash on hand than the whole cryptocurrency uh, space. So, like, they could buy every crypto out there. I think it was twice over, actually. Um and so you have to put these things in perspective. So because it's so small, any little amount of money thrown into something will cause it to go up, okay? Um, any little hype cycle, any little movement or whatever, um, it's, it's gonna cause it to go up. Uh, so if you position yourself properly, you got in properly, you'll be able to take advantage um of what's going on uh the funny thing is i was gonna enter into into uh xrp but i wanted it to go to 11 cents it only stopped at the 16 cents i wanted it down here i was being a little greedy that's the only like and i was just gonna put a hundred dollars into it and see what happened uh it would have been a nice little 7x but I don't even care for it because I would only trade this thing on MC4. Like, look at this big move to $2 on this volume. It's not sustained. You see what I mean? Look how low this volume is compared to all this other volume um, for such a big move. Like, part of that is manipulation, too within these exchanges. You say you got in during high school. During high school? How old are you now? Oh. So, like, four years ago? Five years ago? What a straight. Um, so you've been in the space since 2017? So you should know what's up. You should know XRP is some bullshit. <laughs> you should know what's up. But yo, here here's a sleeper for y'all, for most of y'all that's not really into this space. Polka dot. So polka dot was created by Gavin Woods, um, he was part of the Ethereum um, foundation, like founders and stuff. Um, oh shit, my laptop about to go down. Um, and he created Polkadot, and this thing here is a solid, solid uh, project. Their whole ecosystem um, is pretty much built around interoperability with other uh, blockchains. So what that means is I have an Xbox and there's Polkadot in the middle that allows me to play my Xbox with my PlayStation friends, All right? That's interoperability between two different platforms. That's what Polkadot allows you to do. So yeah, Polkadot, pretty new, but their team is old. Their team is, has been in this space since the beginning. Um, they build solid projects like Ethereum, and they're looking to do the same with, with this. This is like Ethereum 2.0. Uh, it's a little different, but it, it's like, a, uh, you know, it's going to work with Ethereum in a sense. Um, you know, being able to, and it's doing the same thing Bitcoin kind of did. Okay. So um, take out, take a look at Polkadot and its whole ecosystem 
Uh, Polkadot has a whole bunch of uh, coins that are under it, like Kusama, uh, Pokest. No, I don't think Pokestart. No, Pokestar is within that ecosystem. Uh, let's go to the website real quick. Uh, this is a solid project. Uh, yeah, so this here that you see is basically like the network that they're trying to create where data can flow from any blockchain that's within their network, right? So if you need to know the price of real estate and there's a project that focuses on NFTs for real estate, you'll be able to pull that data from wherever, right? So it's creating an ecosystem of blockchains where data can just flow uh, freely. And um, yeah, it just connects the dot with these things, relay chains, parachains, para threads, and bridges. Um, you can learn a little bit about what each of them do for the overall network. Uh, but yo, he he's building a system. Like this is similar to, Eh, you know how Kellogg got hella cereals? It's like that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, take a look at, at Polkadot. That's a solid project. Um, I'll give you guys my my little uh, take on stuff. These are uh, my top projects that I like. Shiba's on here just for, <laughs> because I was telling people about the next Dogecoin early, but I'm actually take that off. But these top projects here, um, you could just focus on them and uh, these are long-term projects. Um, how do I feel about what's going on with Tether? Tether's always been like this. So Tether's always been in some, some nonsense because you have to understand like stable coins are dangerous. Like companies that create stable coins, they're dangerous because they're creating coins out of thin air. I mean, yes, all of the coins are created out of thin air in a sense, but they're saying that these stable coins like Tether that they're backed by the actual amount of money that they have in their um, in their accounts, or like for example, I think Tether's worth a couple, close to a trillion dollars, yeah, sixty-one uh, um, billion dollars. So essentially, Tether is saying that they have this amount of money backed up somewhere. So. <laughs> It's funny you asked me about this shit. I'm going to tell you a game that they run. Let's say I'm a big whale, meaning I got a lot of money. I'll go to Tether, right? And be like, yo, lend me a million dollars. I'll pay you back the, in the million dollars with some interest because I'm about to go crash the price of this token. And I want to use the million dollars that you lend me to buy that token after I've crashed it and cause it to pump. So when that token 10X, 100X in like a day or two, then I'll be able to pay you back your million dollars plus a little interest. And now that me, the whale, I just turned that million dollars into a hundred million dollars in a matter of minutes because I purposefully crashed a token that I might've been holding already by selling all of it right? Thus causing the price to, let's say, go from a dollar to a penny, right? And then I take that million dollars that I borrowed from Tether, and I'm going to put that buy order at a, a penny. And now that amount shot it up to a dollar again. And now my million is at a hundred million. Okay, because I, I then caused it to shoot back up. 
And now I can go ahead and pay uh, Tether back their million plus some interest, and then I keep the rest. And I go about my day. Tether does that with about <laughs> 10 to 20 uh, millionaires in the space a day. And that's how they make most of their money. Um, so a lot of these pump and dump scams, a lot of these long wicks that you see, uh, they're being infiltrated by Tether. Um, you'll always see a lot of Tether activity whenever price is pumping or dumping. And best way to look at that activity is looking at, um, shoot, oh, my bad, y'all. My laptop just died. Uh, whatever. Um, but you'll be able to look at the, y'all can still hear me, right? Just drop a one in the chat if y'all can still hear me. Yeah. All right, bet, bet. So yeah, um, you'll see you'll see that tether would like go below a dollar. This is supposed to stay at one dollar even, right? Whenever you see it goes below a dollar, that means they're borrowing. At least from my from my experience on this on the space, whenever it's below a dollar, they are borrowing money and they're about to take that tether and pump it into Bitcoin. It's probably why you're already seeing those pumps in Bitcoin. And like I said, the charts is looking a little bullish for it to stay above that level to me. Um, so let's let's just see how how things play out um, with it staying above this level. But Tether, they always it always falls up below a dollar when people are borrowing it. Um, and this is usually done off chain and what I well it's not fully off chain but you're not borrowing this from let's say uh, for example there's platforms like compound right it's a decentralized platform where you can borrow against your crypto and the the money that you borrow can be in tether it could be in bitcoin or any other crypto that's out there this is easily seen uh, in terms of the transactions that are made on it. Uh, I don't know why it's not loading. Let me take my shield down. All right, cool. So yeah, when, when you deposit or um, it is a decentralized uh, platform, so it'll just connect to your wallet. Uh, when you do that, you can deposit something in here. Whatever you deposit will earn interest and you can borrow um, any one of these tokens here. You can borrow uh, any one of these. And uh, this is what the APY would be in terms of what you have to pay on it, the interest. Uh, so yeah, you see Tether on here, but Tether, the foundation, the company themselves, they, they uh, do side deals pretty much with these rich people. These rich people don't come on these platforms to take out that loan and stuff like that, because that would be seen like 240 million is liquid on here. That means there's $240 million worth of tether on this overall platform. If I need a hundred million of that, like that's almost going to crash the, the platform. And imagine if 20 people want to do that million dollar trade or deal like how I just told you. It is not enough to go around. So um, essentially, you just want to, there's nothing that you could really do about it, but look for the signs on when it's happening, right? And whenever it's happening, uh, that's why I said it, it goes back to you knowing the basics of your charting. This uh, happens often whenever we're at a support slash resistance uh, where these uh tether buys be happening at um and half the time you'll see these you know big buybacks these big um jumps uh, whether it's a wick or just one or two candles that are just so bullish you could barely even get the buy on it um these here are essentially pending orders that people would put at these levels and as soon as the price hits them, 
uh, it gets bought up, right? It, it, it continues to, to shoot up. Um, I'm part of those people. Um, I don't trade the regular stuff like in between these zones. I wait for it to hit my my uh, demand and supply zone uh, areas, and then I take my buys or sells accordingly. Uh, everything in the in between, that's just retail people trading it back and forth on the daily. That doesn't have the biggest moves that you would want in them. Okay. Um, but my thoughts on the tether thing. It's not good for the space at all. Um, I know they had their they had uh, their hearing from the New York, uh, you know, the Department of Justice or whatever. Um, they they said the the judge or whatever told Tether that they had to provide proof that they actually have all of the money that they say they have. Now, think about this logically. If they don't actually have that money, then they have to sell Tether to actually get that money or sell their Bitcoin or whatever. And if they have to sell, then and they, they hold a lot of it, it's obviously going to have a negative effect on the markets. Uh, but, you know, that that's just my overall thoughts on it. I mean, I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's just part of the game. And uh, if I can strategize, you know, make my strategy uh, be more relevant to the games that they're playing, then I myself can win in that game. So Tether has its place for the rich to go ahead and um, borrow and make their money, um, stuff like that. But overall, I, I there's other other stable coins out there that I could use and and get the same results out of like Dai. All right, y'all. I'm going to end this one here. Um, this has already been a very long convo, uh, but I hope you guys got a little bit better understanding, um, especially on what I'm looking for with uh, Bitcoin. Um, this does look bullish to me that it'll stay above this zone here but again still still uh to be seen um i can look at my emas here just to see how things are playing out uh or whatever but it's just a waiting game for me right now just to see how uh it's actually going to play out um but other than that um you know, just shoot. We're starting to get across on that 15, uh, which isn't a good thing. But just watch out for that 41K area uh, to see if we stay above it, uh, especially on the 30 minute or the uh, hourly. Um, yeah, if we stay above it, then take your long all the way to 50K. Um, if we break below it, then take your short to 35K, um, to 35K and then, well, 36 and then 35, like 36, 7, 35, because we have this support here. Um, and keep in mind that your 200 is at around 40K. So remember I told y'all, 200 um, EMA, it plays as a major support, especially when things are bullish and it plays as a resistance when things are um, bearish or moving sideways. So we may see a scenario where our 50 and our uh, 20 crosses, but we find support at the 200 which is around the same area where our, you know, that 41K resistance slash support is going to be at, okay? So the 200 EMA, you want to see it find support there on top of it, and that will carry its move up. If things start to uh, swindle down like this, we fell below the 200, but I immediately told you guys to, um, you know, watch for the, the retest of that 41k because we usually find some bullish 
uh, momentum because um, a lot of people are looking at the same things, right? We find some bullish momentum whenever we fall below it. Uh, if we're still going in that bullish sense. If I would have saw we got rejected here a couple of times, then yeah, like, oh snap, we might really be bearish. Uh, before the 200, remember too that it's per period. So if I'm looking at the 15 minute, it may look totally different than how the EMA look on the one hour. Okay, so keep that in mind. On the 15 minute is just the 200 period right moving average um so this this here this number that this line is giving me is averaging the last 200 15 minute candles and kind of giving me that average price so right now price is pretty much above average um so that's a, a bullish stance on but uh that's just my quick analysis on things um I'm going to continue to show you guys like the, you know, quick and easy ways to do things uh, in the crypto space, especially we're earning free cryptos. I'm all about making free money in this sense. Um, oh, snap. It's like five of y'all on here. Uh, have y'all gotten or heard of the helium boxes? Um, I know some of you guys been with me for a minute. I know some of you guys weren't able to get them. Oh, Mariah is on here. Because I don't understand why I wasn't letting you buy. Get another one. Eugenie, you said you've tried. Um, why are you telling me to fill out password? Resetting everyone's. So, yeah, helium. Um, let's see if this thing actually sent me a email. You said, why do I have onion? Like the the software onion? Like Tor? Uh, <laughs> I used to play in the dark web back in the day. Yeah, gang, gang. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean that yo, that's really what uh got me into got me into Bitcoin. Bitcoin. No cap. Because you need a Bitcoin to do anything. So in high school I used to uh, jailbreak and root people phones. So sometimes I would have to get uh the software or like a uh uh what's it called? A patch for something and I would have to go on the dark web and do it. And at the time I didn't know nothing about Bitcoin the way that I know about it now, like an investment opportunity. Um, I simply was exchanging my U.S. dollar for this coin that I needed to buy, you know, whatever I needed to buy. So I never looked at it that way. And then when Mt. Gox got hacked or whatever, I just sold all the remaining amounts that I had um, just to kind of get out of it and forget about it. The last like batch of Bitcoin that I had sold before I fully understood like what the fuck I was doing, it was like roughly six hundred bitcoins, and oh you wow, but that was like 
2013. And then I went off to college. I didn't pay no mind to nothing crypto wise. It wasn't until my homeboy hit me up and was like, yo, you still doing X, Y, Z? And I'm like, what? Nah, not really. He came to my house. Like this motherfucker has never stepped foot in my house. <laughs> he came to my house and shit. And it was like, uh, it was just showing me everything. And then that's when I got fully back into it. This was like end of 2016 type shit. And so like, yeah, yeah. But that's why I use Tor because I'll be on the dark web with shit. Yeah, nah, facts, facts, facts. That's the way. We're not going to speak on what I be doing. (laughs) But as soon as I seen that, I was like, I was like, "Mm." (laughs) hmm. Nah, yeah, that's, that's the way for real. Plus, um, plus, with the brave and everything, I started putting things together. I was like, Mm-mm. Uh, <laughs> my, my guy, my my guy, on to sign. He on to sign, man. I'm make, I'm making moves, I for real. Uh, but let me put y'all on um Emirate um for some of you guys that aren't on there. Go to Emirate.io and apply to be a host. Um, so. So there's this cryptocurrency company called Helium. Well, not that place. Uh, Helium.com. So what they're doing is they're creating a uh, a network, a virtual network themselves, uh, where things can be connected to, like uh, you know, you can connect small Bluetooth devices, you can connect uh, pretty much anything because they're just developing a network where things can be connected to. So that could be like, hey, if you're a company, a trucking company and want to track all of your trucks and assets and stuff like that, you can do that all from one network. Um, They even came out with uh, the physical tracking devices or whatever that would just be uh, connected across this network. But the first thing that they got to do, damn, they're always changing this website. Oh, console 2.0 started today. I haven't read about this. But uh, yeah, you can, oh, you can start using the network now. That's clutch. So the first thing they were doing was building out the overall uh, network. Um Yeah, so we have solutions for all these different methods. I want to see where the Explorer is. All right, there you go. So this here is the Helium Explorer, which shows you, yeah, all of the different boxes. I'm going to go to the, the original Explorer because that new one is, I haven't interacted with it much. Damn, a hundred and three thousand. That's max. When I first got on here, there was only oh, and it looks like there's data missing from this first one because there's a lot more shit here. Uh, but essentially, the first steps is to create this network, right? It's sort of like, hey, we got the telephone, but we ain't got no telephone poles to carry the signal across the the country. So you had to get these boxes out. Um, Obviously they had to either convince people to buy them or um, factor in this company called Emirate. Uh, They're actually handing these boxes out for free if you met some criteria of theirs, obviously. Um, So they send you the box, you plug it up, um, you plug it up, put the antenna on it, Um, put it next to a window and that's that's it that's your only responsibility Um, and of course you know obviously keep it online and keep it running but the boxes do everything themselves Um, they're able to uh, run by themselves do the connections etc and you'll be able to earn the agency token so I'm gonna click on just a random one Oh, yeah, it's because they're doing the grids now. 
Let's go to grid, which show you how many is in there. So I clicked on one and you see the line that's going to the other ones. That's basically an activity that it has done. Uh, you can see all of the different activities um, from rewards to beacons, um, data, etc. You see all of the different uh, activities that it's, it's doing. Uh, on the statistics side, you'll see its earnings on a 24, 7 day or 30 day basis. So in the past 30 days, uh, this box has made uh, 12, almost 13 tokens which is worth 180 bucks right now. So this person just simply plugged up their box and just uh, let it run. Um, so you can, sit, you can do the same for free with Helium. Um, they will send you your own box uh, and Helium will give you 20% of what that box makes, okay? So keep that in mind. So, um, yeah, this one hasn't earned anything yet, but you'll earn 20% of whatever that box makes. And, oh, this tells you how many of them is in the damn square, which is ridiculous. It's crazy. But, uh, yeah, check it out. Sign up, get you a box, get you multiple boxes if you can. Um, I'm going to check out check that out to see what's up um and yeah just if you need any assistance with that just let me know that's another way to earn some free crypto especially on the crypto that has some usage behind it all right y'all zay zay it yeah. told me not enough people in my area are um using it so what does that so i had to get more people to use it is that what that means no, it's just based off of based off of uh, Emirates criteria. I don't know how they do their shit because they told one of my homeboys who lives in Irvington, New Jersey, that there's not enough around him. But he ordered one for his homeboy that literally lives around the corner and he got his. So it's based off of whatever criteria they have set up. Um, it's, so there's a couple of things you can do. You can just have people around you um, sign up for one, right? And send them all of the addresses at the, you know, let's say, you know, like three or four people on your street, send them all the addresses um, all at once. Or you could do this. Use another address because um, he said, I'm going to finesse my way for three boxes. You could, yeah, you could get a, as many boxes as you can. Um, use another address and see if it works because I was able to, it's crazy how they said it's not enough around you when I done ordered one for like my, it was like my old school teacher. She moved down to like North Carolina or some shit. And I ordered like two of them, one sent to her school, one sent to her apartment. Look at North Carolina. There's barely shit out here. Um, and they were able to re receive some, I forget where they're from, but I would say use multiple or different addresses. Use like your grandma address, your aunt's address, even, um, because I think you can have it sent to you, but the installation address is somewhere else. Don't quote me on that because they have been changing a lot of things. Uh, but I will tell you this, you can, um, you can put an installation address, but you don't actually install it there. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that again. You can put an address that you say you're gonna install it at, but don't actually install it there. Um, I, have, I have about 20 boxes across the US that are mining and roughly five or six of them are not at the addresses that they that I've told them they were going to be at. And in fact, I'm running, well, accidentally running an experiment where I had a box sent to my aunt's house. And then my cousin, who that's his mother, 
he had one sent to his mother's house too, but he actually has it installed at his house in Belleville and his mother lives in Newark. Um, the box that actually is plugged up in Newark is earning about three times less than the box that's actually plugged up in Belleville. Although on the, on the map and everything, it says that there's two boxes that are plugged up in that one area, but the one that's actually further away is making a lot more money than the one that's plugged up where it has to be. So I would say for the free ones, I don't know what their criteria are in terms of who gets one and who doesn't, but I would say um, if your address gets denied, um, try your address again, try someone else's address, or if you know a lot of people around your area, just have all of them sign up with you um, and, and y'all earn. And so check, I say try your address again because at the time that you tried it, it might have been too early and there might be more people that have some around where you live now and you can go ahead and should be able to earn it now. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much the whole idea behind it. Um, just get you a box, plug it up and let it rock. Um, this was my first box from Emirate. But since then, I've um, what I've earned from this, I was able to purchase my own box um, myself. Uh, so that's not bad. So past 30 days is made uh, 200 bucks or 14 tokens. So I'll get 20% uh, of that. Uh, yeah, so the earnings have been lower and lower month by month. Oh, the fucking halving is happening tomorrow, I believe. Yeah, so the rewards are going to be cut in half, and we should see a big spike in price. So collect these as much as you can. Um, when I first started, there was only 17,000 Helium Explorers. Now it's 103,000. Um, shoot, in the past 30 days alone, 29,000 boxes have hit the market. So um, there's a lot of demand and there's about 200 boxes that are in back order or delay. So there's a lot of demand for this. Um, it's a lot of uh, a lot of movement to get these things. Um, and so I, I see the hype coming in, you know. Um, all right, man. Um, I'm really going to hop off this time. I got some shits to do. Um, I'm going to holla at y'all or text me in the chat if y'all got any questions about anything. I'm always here to help. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. Y'all have a good Saturday afternoon. You too. Thank you. Yep. Catch y'all in the chat.